In 1947, the UN divided the Palestinian territory in two. 45% for the Arabs, 55% for Jews. Only a year after Israel declares independence, 78% of Palestine was seized, evicting 700,000 Palestinians from their land. What was left, 22%, the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, were under direct control of Egypt and Jordan. In 1967, after the Six-Day War, these two were also occupied. In 1998, at Camp David, LPO formally recognizes the State of Israel and the 1967 border. Again, a new agreement was proposed in 2000 by the Barak administration. A large portion of the West Bank was now claimed. 18% of Palestine was left. In 2004, with the wall, the Sharon administration left the Palestinians 11% of the territory. In grey, these are the Palestinian areas, as were inhabited in 1967. Little has changed since the Palestinians were unable to expand their cities. In blue, we can see the Israeli settlements. For security purposes, Israel set up checkpoints to minimize Palestinian movements. The occupation of a large portion of the West Bank followed three stages. The building of settlements, the establishment of checkpoints and wall building. The wall takes away 55% of the West Bank. The wall does not separate Israel from Palestine. On the map, marked in green, is the West Bank border from the Israeli state. Marked in red is the wall as it was built until 2004. In blue, the building of the wall since 2004. Third stage construction is in green. If we look at the map, the land portions given to be under the Palestinian Authority by the Oslo Agreement and the wall itself we can see what's ahead, a clearly defined border for the divided Palestine. The 700 kilometers long walls is three times the length and double the height of the Berlin Wall. It separates cities. It creates a maze. Like Berlin, it severs avenues. With the wall, Israel takes away one-third of the water resources for the West Bank. All this nonsense about the wall being a structure that can prevent military operation is, uh, is uh, I don't want to use bad words now, but it's not correct. Uh, I personally, and you can put, can put that on record, I personally break the law and sneak into Jerusalem because East Jerusalem is part of Palestine. I was born there. They have no right to prevent me from doing so. And the wall does not prevent me. So if they think that this is, this is, this is not a wall for security, this is a wall for land appropriation. The, the Israelis, when they built the wall, they not built it in the borders of 1967. They take a lot of land, they build it in the Palestinian land, and there is more than 140,000 dunams of uh, cultivated land behind the wall, in the west of the wall. I met someone who was a lawyer in the time of the Oslo Agreement. He said that she said the Oslo Agreement was like a, making the West Bank like a Swiss cheese a Swiss holes. We, the Palestinians, got the holes. Okay, there's no cheese in it. There is a lot of the Palestinian artesian wells. They are in the west, uh, the uh, aquifer. It means where is the wall? This is why the artesian well in the wall and you can't uh, uh, pump the water from this area to the area where you are cultivated your land. It means you have to leave these artesian wells and the Israelis will pump the water and use it in their country. So this is another problem. It's equal 33% of the total water in the uh, West uh, uh, Aquifer in, in West Bank. With the wall maze, and the several checkpoints, Palestinians in the West Bank are completely dependent on the Israeli to go to work, to go to school, to reach a hospital, to trade their goods. Karkilia is one of the cities completely surrounded by the wall. 46,000 inhabitants have only one gate to reach the outside world. Nablus, a larger city to the east, is a 20-minute drive. 
Twelve checkpoints make the time travel a grinding five-hour commute. Twenty percent of the impoverished West Bank agriculture was seized by the wall. Israeli settlers cut down the olive trees or steal the crops. Israeli peace movements on site are also powerless to stop the plunder, the intimidation, and the assaults made against farmers. And uh, they, there is some of gates. You know, they have to open that. Usually, they open it for uh, one hour in the in the morning or half an hour, and half an hour afternoon. And if you are not there in this time, you will stay in the land. You can't return back. Of course. The farmers now they have the season of the olives and they wanted to cut to collect their production, and they can't go there. They can't take their tractors. They can't take their cars to carry the production, and this is why they have a lot of difficulties. How to work there? Uh, of course, also when you will ask for a permission, they will get they will give a permission for the old people. And the young people who are the real workers in the land, they can't get this permission. It's Israeli policy to encourage the farmers to leave their land and to confiscate it, to take it and to add it to the Israeli territories. And security check sometimes it's taking a lot of time, and it means the production will be damaged. If you wanted to uh, export, for example, strawberries, which they are very sensitive, you will. If it's more than two, three hours, it will be affected. Sometimes they put it under the sun, you know, for one hour, one day. So next day it will be like a juice. That everything is a struggle. To get educated is a struggle. To get healthcare is a struggle. To cross from one city to another is a struggle. To harvest uh, olive trees is a big struggle. This year we have a very uh, good season of olives. And usually, olives for us, it's around some some years. It's around 25 percent from the total income of the agriculture. So, a lot of the farmers, their land uh, around the settlements. After they collect it, they put it in the main street until the car or the truck will carry it, and the settlers will come and take it and steal it. Our life is constant resistance. They say that we shouldn't use the word resistance. What does that mean? Resistance is a very good word. It means you do not accept injustice and you struggle for your life. Resistance does not mean necessarily that it has to be military.